In the previous video, we talked about the output function of your neural network for a multi-label classification. And we said that each neuron in your output function has to be a sigmoid function. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you should present your ground truth vector to your artificial neural network for multi-label classification. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Don. So, so far we have been talking about the multi-label classification in our list. Let's just take a look. We've talked about multi-label versus multi-class classification and we talked about recently uh, about the output function for multi-label classification. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about the ground truth vector. Now again, this is your artificial neural net. You've got four classes. Let's say this is a multi-label classification problem and um, I said that so each neuron is a sigmoid function, right? So each neuron can be a value between 0 and 1, right? So that's the property of your sigmoid function. So let's say, um, I mean, let's say this one is 0 0.9, this one is 0 0.8, um, this one, well, that's a very ugly 0 0.8, 0 0.8, this one is 0 0.1, and this one is 0.2, right? And let's say this is the prediction vector for an input data, for an input data that could be an image in which, uh, let's say, two given uh, animals pr are present. Let's say your classes are, the first class is dog, the second class is duck, what else? The third class is cat, the last class is uh, chicken. Right? So let's say in that image, you have uh, the, the dog and the duck images present, right? So your input data belongs to the first and second class at the same time, hence multi-label classification. And your network is doing a pretty good job uh, because it is uh, representing, it is outputting high values for uh, the first and second neuron, right? So this guy and this guy and is producing very low values for the third and, uh, and fourth uh, classes, right? So it means that the network believes that this input data belongs to class label one, dog, and class label two, duck, right? So these values are what we'd like to call your Y hat. Sometimes uh, they also denote it with P. Um, so Y hat is simply the prediction vector of your neural network. Now the question is, how am I going to present my ground truth vector? Uh, now, uh, for multi-label classification problem, uh, problems, things are a little bit different than compared to the multi-class classification problem. So in your multi-class classification problem, what you typically do is you represent your ground truth vector, or Y, with a one-hot encoding vector, meaning that, for example, if you have four classes here, uh, you could only have one of the elements of this uh, Y vector as one, and everything else has to be zero. Because your input data, for example, could only belong to the first class, in which case your ground truth is represented as one, zero, 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 right? or 0, 1, 0, 0, or 0, 0, 0, 1, right? So only one of these elements, one of these four elements in your Y vector can be one. That's the case of multi-class classification problem. And typically what you're saying is, uh, you would like to encourage your neural network to present or to output high values for, for example, in this case, for the first class, right? Because you're saying that, look, I want you to output one and that's your ground truth for the first class, right? And I want you to produce very, very low values, as low as zero for the second class, zero for the third class, and zero for the fourth class, right? So it means that, look, this input data belongs to only the first class, right? Only the first class. So very high, high output for the first class, and make sure that you will lower everything else for all the other classes, right? So that is your multi-class classification problem. Things are different when it comes to 
multi-label classification problem. Here you could have more than one class at the same time. More than one class label could be true at the same time. So in this case, let's say your input data indeed belong to the first and second class. So we've got a dog and a duck present in that image, right? So in that case, your ground truth vector, you might have guessed it by now, by the way, but it's not a one-hot encoding vector anymore. It's like multi-hot encoding. Uh, so in this case, if your image has both dog and duck in it, then your ground truth vector has to be one, again, one, and then zero and zero, meaning that you want the network to increase the output of this output and this output as much as possible and decrease the values of this output and this output as much as possible, as, as, as much as zero basically, right? This is your zero, these are your zeros and these are your ones, right? That's it. So in this case, you can see that the network is doing a pretty good job. But if it, there was a different story, if uh, let's say your ground truth vector is supposed to be one, zero, zero, one, right? So in this case, the neural network is actually guessing that, look, this input image, I believe that it belongs to the first class, for sure, and that is, you know, confirmed by the ground truth vector that for the element belonging to class one, but the ground truth vector says, look, it does not belong to the second class, it does not belong to the third class, so you are still outputting something very high for the second class, so that's wrong, but here you're not, you're doing a good job, decent job, right? Point one, it's low enough, it's close enough to zero maybe, right? And here again, look, the ground truth vector is saying, look, in this image there's also a chicken present, right? But you believe that there is no chicken because it's a low value, it's a lower boundary over sigmoid function. So, to, to summarize, as for this particular input image, the the neural network believes that the, the, the bit that is doing a good job about is it has detected that it belongs to the first class. It has sort of detected that it doesn't belong to the third class because it's a low value. Um, but it has so mistakenly, so, so wrongly, it is believing, it actually believes that it, the, your input data belongs to the uh, second class. Where it, whereas the grand truth says, no, it doesn't, right? So this is really bad. And in this case, it, it had to guess or it had to uh, predict, uh, predict that it also belongs to the last class. But as you can see, it has outputted a very low value for the fourth class. In the next video, we're going to be talking about, okay, we have the y hat and we have the ground truth. How should we compute the loss function for each one of these classes and aggregate the result into one error value for our multi-label classification problem. Thank you.